Welcome to Mac and Cheese, Simple as a Child, and today we are in John 11, which is Jesus Raises Lazarus from the Dead. Ready? Yeah, we're ready. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perf perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Lord, the one you love is sick. So Jesus is talking about they're from Bethany, which is not too far from Jerusalem. This is a this is a family of Martha and Mary. We see throughout the Gospels. We'll see in the Gospel of John, chapter the the next chapter uh, next week, and then also Luke chapter ten. But this is Mary, who Jesus said took the perfume, and she wiped his feet with her hair in the perfume. Remember, she got ridiculed for that because it was such an expensive perfume. It was a showing of anointing that Jesus was going to have to die for the people. So Wait. they're saying, you, the Lord, the one you love is sick. So they're really concerned about Lazarus. Lazarus is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. So that God's son may be glorified through it. So that's a bold statement because we're going to see later on that they think he died. He died for four days. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see the significance of why they, they had four. But he says, the sickness will not end in death. No, it's for the God's glory. So that Jesus, through the Father, is going to use the situation with Lazarus to show the glory of God that he is the creator of life and death. And he can heal because they're going to think he's dead. Verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was, he was two more days. Okay, so he heard he was sick, and we know he died for four days. So he stayed purposely another two days, two as a witness. And he stayed two days because he, wa he needed this all to play through to show the glory of God the Father, who is the healer. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are trying to go back? So they're trying to, uh, they're trying to warn Jesus. He said, Jesus says, let's go back to Judea. And they said, Rabbi, the Jews are trying to stone you. So if you go back there, they're going to stone you. Why would you go back there? And this is what Jesus says. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks into the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. So what is Jesus saying? Okay, he's saying a couple things here. He says there's 12 hours in one day, in each part of the day. So we have 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness. 12 is the number of the completion of the nation of Israel in the Bible too. So he's saying, in the daylight, I am with you. The light of the world will be protecting because he is the light of the world. But when we go into dark, that's when we stumble, when we don't have light. He's trying to tell you, I am the light. As long as this light's in the world, you will see. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So that's a term they sometimes use in the Bible that the Apostle Paul uses it, that they were at sleep, but this is meaning death. The, the, the disciples thought um, that was natural sleep, but Jesus knew that it was truly the death of Lazarus. Verse 14. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> He's like, uh, can you get more plainly than that? No. Uh... Dudes, 
Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then so he said, let, 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 for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let's go to him. Why did he say that? Because Jesus wants to be, Jesus wants to raise him. Yeah, he wants to show them okay. he is the son of God and that God, the father, gets the glory by coming in at the perfect timing to show this great miracle. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. So Thomas, who is, there's a doubting Thomas, but also says can, that we may die with him. Let's also go so we may die with him. So they, they realize now that he's talking about their death. And that's a really good uh, example for us in our walk in Jesus. It's easy to die for Jesus. Why is it easy to die for Jesus? Because you're just saying it. You know, say that if you die and you love Jesus in your heart, where do you go? Heaven. To go to heaven. Your pain and suffering is already over. The, old, the, the saying is, it's easier to die for Jesus than to walk in Jesus' name and walk for Jesus. Do you know what, the dip, that, what that means? Meaning the walk is going to be harder and you're going to be tested. Yep. Because it's easy just to say, Lord, take me home. Then you're, boom, up with the Father. You're in heaven. You're in paradise. No more pain, no more suffering. And uh, when he comes back again, you'll get your glorified body. But if you have a, he has a will for you, and you're walking in Christ every day, what's going to happen? You're going to. It's going to be a battle. And it's going to be a battle, yeah. Yep. Satan does not want you to do the will of God. So you're going to get attack, attack, attack. So it's, it's why it's, but it's, it's harder to walk for Jesus than it is to die for Jesus. Because I died. I went to heaven. That was easy compared to walking for Jesus. Verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Four days. Four is the number of what? The world. The world. And in Jewish custom, three is the, is, means the completion of God's spirit. Okay, That's mm -hmm. what the number three means in Judaism. We know it as the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But in Jewish tradition that they believed after the third day that the soul and spirit had left the body. So that means nobody but God could bring anybody back after three days. Smart. And that's why Jesus waited to the fourth day because he's going to show the world, which is four, he is not a prophet. He is the Son of God. He is the second of the Godhead. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. So um, um, Bethany is a real short walk from Jerusalem. So when we go to Israel, you'll be able to see, uh, you will be able to see Bethany not too far from Jerusalem. This is walking distance. There are many people in custom when somebody dies in Judaism. It's a family event. People come and mourn with them and, and, um, and, and, and give their support because they think they lost Lazarus. He's dead. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So he's, she's thinking of the world right now, right? Mm -hmm. She's thinking, well, Jesus, if you were here, my brother would still be alive. But I know it's, you're filling God's purpose. So what did Jesus say to her? Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. So she didn't understand what he meant. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection, resurrection at the last day. So Martha's thinking that Lazarus is dead and that he will rise again because of his faith in Jesus as the Lord of, of his life. That on the resurrection day, meaning the day that the, either Jesus comes back for the church or comes back for the uh, millennial reign of Jesus Christ, that we will have a glorified body. You'll have a new body, incapable of sin anymore, incapable of, of, of aging, being old. That's what she thought about the resurrection and, and, and living again. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? So read that again. I am, this is one of the I am statements, meaning I am that I am. 
the resurrection and the life. He is the firstborn of the resurrection. He and he is the life. He who believes in me will live. If we believe in him and trust in him with our heart, we live. How do we live with him? By being with him. Soul and spirit for eternity with him. Even though he dies, you will even though we die, we'll still be with him in our soul and spirit because of our trust and faith in him. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Our body will the fleshly human body will die, but our soul and spirit will never die and we'll get a new body with him. Do you believe this? He asks. Do you believe this? Mm-hmm. You do? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of the son of God, who's to come into the world. So she made a huge statement here. She says, "Yes, Lord." When she or he Jesus questions her on this, "Do you believe this?" She didn't even hesitate. She says, "Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah and you are the son of God who has come into the world." God gave his only begotten son as the Messiah to come into the world so that we could be rescued through him. What a glorious thing. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. "The teacher is here," she said, "and is asking for you." When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. So Mary wanted to connect to Jesus because she knows he's the son of God. Because remember, she's going to wipe his t- tears away, uh, or, or take the anointing oil uh, with her hair. Uh, so she wants to hurry up and see Jesus, even though her brother is dead. She wants to come and see the rabbi. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. See how quickly she got up. She completely, they thought she was going to go mourn for her, her brother, but she knew he was Christ. So she got up quickly to go meet the Christ. Verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Here Mary says the same thing Martha does. If you would have been here, he would not have died. But Jesus has t- done this for a reason, to show people the miracle. But you know, Mary and Martha had great faith because they knew he was the Savior. They got up quickly, and they knew he could have saved them if he would have been there earlier, but they knew where their brother was going to be. What a great comfort that is when we know somebody that loves Jesus with all their heart, their soul, and their mind, and they die here on the earth. We know they're going to be home with the Lord. They're mm-hmm. in a better place. When Jesus saw her weeping... And the Jews who had come along with her, also weeping, he was deeply moved, in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Okay, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? Because he felt for a second what it was like being us. Yeah. He loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They were, they were, they were like family to him. They were so, he was so close to them. He saw the pain and suffering that they went through to lose a loved one. He knows what the pain and suffering it is for us to lose a loved one or to hurt or go through the battles of life. That you think that the Son of God, the Messiah, could actually weep. He weeps because he feels our pain. That's why he had to come onto the earth as a man and have sin nature in him to feel what we felt. That's the sign of a great leader. Because he could have just been God in heaven and said... I'll take them all home. But he sacrificed himself to come into a manger. Remember when we started with a manger? Humble, feeling the pain and suffering that we go through, and then taking it to the cross later on. That is our Lord. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? See, they were just like, wow, this Messiah really loves man. It's absolutely amazing. Verse 37. But some of them said, could not he... Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So some, there's always a doubter, right? There's a doubter in every group saying, this is the same guy that made the blind man see. Couldn't he save this man? He's not all that in a bag of chips if he can't save this guy. See, they're always questioning. Some said they, they loved him. He said the compassion of him. Some say, oh, geez, if he would have been here earlier, he could have saved him. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. 
So that's it was custom back then. That's what, what happened with Jesus. He'll be laid in a tomb. They put a stone in front of it because what they do when somebody dies in Israel or in, in this time of Jesus in, in the Old Testament, they would put the body in a burial place like they did with this tomb, and they put a rock in front of it. And then after the year anniversary, they would take the bones after the body decays and put it in an ossuary. It's a bone box. You ever seen a bone box ossuary? So when we go to Israel, you'll see right in front of the eastern gate, right of the temple, you'll see a lot of people buried in bone boxes. So that, that's, that was the tradition of how they would do that. But Lord, said Martha to the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad order, odor, for he has been there for four days. She's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You better not roll that rock away. He's been dead for four days. He's going to be a little bit ripe. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And he's saying, if you believe, you're going to see the glory of God. You think there's a man in here that is dead and the soul and spirit has left that body. And you think there's going to be an odor here. But what I'm about to do is I'm going to show you the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. This is very important. So let's read this. Um, so he, after he took away the stone, Jesus looked up to the Father and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He's saying this out loud so that they can hear, because Jesus didn't need to do that. So that they know that everything he does is praying to the Father for the Father to get the glory. And the Father is giving the Son the direction. Verse 42. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Okay, so if we're in Jesus and he's in the Father, does that mean he always hears us? Yeah. Yep. So what great comfort that is to know in verse 42. I know, I knew that you always hear me. So God always hears us through Jesus if we put our belief in him. No matter what it is, he hears our cries. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Wow. Just think of that. Jesus, in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Why did he say Lazarus, come out? Because that's what his name was. Right. Because if he would have just said, you come out because of the power of Jesus, everybody would have come out raised from the dead because he's got that kind of power. So he had to say, Lazarus, just this Lazarus, come out. And they were like, wow, the dead man came out. His hands and feet are wrapped in strips of linen. Because strips of linen is what you, you put the, in the burial ointment to, to wrap the body. We'll see that later with Jesus. This is what they did with him. And they were amazed. He was wrapped with strips of linen and clothed around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the, gro the, the grave clothes and let him go. Why did he say take off the grave clothes and let him go? Because he wasn't dead anymore? He wasn't dead. He was alive. He was alive. Praise to God. The Jews plot to kill Jesus. Verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them, some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting on the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin is the, 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 the law of the Pharisees. That was the, the, the ruling body of the Sanhedrin. There's a Sanhedrin in place again today. Uh, the Pharisees were plotting to see what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting in the Sanhedrin. What are we going to do with this Jesus guy? They had a dilemma. He's going to cause us problems. Instead of saying, he is the son of God. He is the Messiah. He just brought Lazarus from the dead. They're going, uh-oh, if we don't do something about this guy, the Romans are going to kick us out. We won't have a temple. We won't have a Sanhedrin. They missed it. They were too wrapped up in religion instead of love relationship. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Then the Romans will come out and take both our temple and our nation. See? So they were too, more concerned about their temple and their nation and their status and their vanity and their money and their prestige instead of 
the love of the Son of God, who the Old Testament talked about would be coming in to save the nation of Israel. We'd be coming in as Messiah ben David, in the line of David, to be a king in the line of David forever. And they were too worried about their place in the Sanhedrin and their place in the nation. They actually said this. Then one of them, named Cyphus, Ky Ky Typhus, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. To Caiaphas, there was two high priests. There was Annas, which was his father-in-law. That, that was who the true high priest was. But the Romans wanted to, to put a, a thumb up at the, the Jewish people. So they made Caiaphas the high priest, which it should have been Annas. That's why you see Caiaphas and Annas uh, both in here. We'll see when they take Jesus to, uh, to, to the Sanhedrin. Uh, both of them will, will question him. But it's interesting about Caiaphas. Caiaphas, everybody says, oh, this is a beautiful story. It's a wonderful story. But there was no ever proof that this Caiaphas character ever existed until about the late 1990s. They were doing uh, a digging in Israel. And anytime you dig into Israel, you, it's a big deal to dig because you can't dig. You have to go down and around and because there's so many artifacts. Well, long story short, they found an ossuary outside of Jerusalem. And it said on the ossuary, which is the bone box, the high priest Caiaphas. They actually found his bones. Wow. That this guy literally existed exactly the way the Bible said. So he said, you do not realize it's better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. He says, it's better for this cat to die than us lose our nation. Verse 51. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God. Okay, so let's okay finish that up and we'll go over that. To bring them together and make them one. Right, so um, 51, he did not say this on his own. He, he, as a high priest, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. He got a prophecy. And that's exactly what God wanted him to do, that Jesus would die for the nation of Israel. Jesus would die for the Gentiles. Jesus would die for all. He took it the other way, that he would die so that they could keep their temple and keep their vanity. Verse 52 is referencing the prophet Isaiah 49, verse 6. So we'll go, I'll skip to Isaiah 49, verse 6. This is what the prophet Isaiah said about the coming servant of the Lord, the future Redeemer. He says, It's too small of a thing for you to be, to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I'll also make you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvations to the ends of the earth. He is the light, like he was the light that was in the, in the, on the, during the day. He is the light to the Gentiles, and he is the salvation to the ends of the earth. That was from the prophet Isaiah, saying this, this is what the Messiah will accomplish. And they missed it. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness, to a village called Ephraim, Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. Why did he remove away from them? Because he was scared of them? Um, Therefore, no, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Why did he do that? Jesus they, is not scared of them. Because they weren't listening to him? They weren't listening, but it wasn't his time yet. Everything was set perfectly for God's timing that Jesus would go on the festival. It would be on Passover. So we're getting up to Passover now. Verse 55. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing, cleansing before the Passover. So before Passover, you have to go there early and you do a cleansing, a ceremonial cleaning so that you're pure. Passover is one of the biggest festivals in the Hebrew um, there's seven Hebrew festivals. Passover actually has three festivals in one. You have the, the first fruit. Uh, you have the Passover, which is a week, which is on the 14th of Nisan. It starts on the 14th of Nisan. And then you have the week of unleavened bread. So you have three festivals in one over the Passover. But you had to be ceremonial cleansed before this happened. They would also talk later in the Gospels of how they take the whitewashed tombs 
and they would clean them up to make it spiffy when people would come into Jerusalem so that we would celebrate it because Jesus would later say, you know, you have your whitewashed tombs, but you're still dead inside. They're trying to f make everything look good instead of having what? Is it better to look good or have a good heart? Good heart. Yep, know who he is. That's what he wants. He doesn't, he didn't care about the Passover and that your table setting's good and you got the right forks in place and you're going through the traditions of the Passover. No, Passover is to know back to Exodus. That's where the Passover lamb came, Exodus 12, where Moses was told to take the, 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 the three-year-old of, of lamb, the lamb of God, and take the blood of the lamb into the hyssop and put it on the marker of the doors, on the side post and at the top. And what's that the form of? Cross. The cross, the blood, so the, it would pass over. And his blood passed over for us as well. So what they were doing in Exodus with Moses is foreshadowing the Lamb of God, what he would have to do for us, the G Jews and the Gentiles. They kept looking for Jesus, and as, as they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? But the chief priests and the Pharisees, Pharisees had given orders that anyone who found out where Jesus was should report it so that they may arrest him. So they're looking at him. Where is he? If this is the Messiah, he'd, be, he'd come into the festival. He's not here. Where is he? And then they said, if you find him, arrest him. So they had so much, so much pride in their heart, so much religion in their spirit that they wanted this, this Jesus character gone. Even though he was creating miracles, even though he raised Lazarus from the dead and he had love, they saw him weeping. They saw his compassion. They saw everything is about him, his love that he came. But they wanted a plot to kill him and remove him. Why? For their own, for their own good. For their own good. That's the difference between a religion and a love relationship of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're in a religion, you're doing it wrong. It's got to be a love relationship. That's why it goes back to the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. That's such a beautiful verse because he has such love and compassion that he saw the pain and suffering that Martha and Mary were going through because Lazarus was dead. That Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, Messiah ben David, wept. <sighs> wow, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Well, that was a very quick chapter 11. Any, any more you want to add to chapter 11 about Lazarus? Just one question. Yeah. Back to um, when he was, when he said Lazarus come out, mm -hmm. and you said he, he specified Lazarus because he didn't want to let all the other ones come out too. But why didn't he say that? Because it, they were not, it wasn't their time to be alive? Well, he wanted to show the miracle that Lazarus, everybody knew Lazarus was dead, and they knew he was dead for four days. And they knew under the tradition that the soul and spirit in Judaism, for the Jews, that the soul and spirit leaves the body after the third day. So that's why it was fourth day. A, a, a prophet couldn't do that. It'd have to be God that did that. And three is the number of God's complete spirit in Judaism as well. As you look at the word, in uh, Genesis, uh, it's called Elohim, you know, Elohim of God. It's grammatically in Hebrew means three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So even in Hebrew, it means three, the completion of God's Spirit. Uh, remember in Genesis, it says, God made man in our image, plural. Well, there's one God, right? Mm -hmm. Why does it say plural? Because uh, Jesus. Because of Jesus and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. God loved man so much that he made man in the image of Elohim. Image of the Father, the image of the Son, and the image of the Holy Spirit. But we had sin nature in us because of the fall of Lucifer, and we have sin nature in us because of Adam and Eve sinning in the Garden of Eden. Wow. So we had to have this test of life all through life. But he made us in his image, and he wants to reconcile us in his image. And he reconciled us in his image by sending us who? Jesus. His son to come in as what? A human oh, yeah. to have the sin in him. So we, he experienced what we experienced. He experienced temptation, but he was God. He could overcome temptation. That's why Satan tempted him. 
You don't tempt somebody if you can't tempt them, right? Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, there's no power in that. But Jesus loved us so much and the Father loved us so much that not only did he create us in their image, but he came down in the form of a baby in a manger, humble, and then became a man to see and feel what we felt because that's why Jesus wept, because he feels what we feel. That's how much he loved us. The Passover lamb, he gave it all up for us. Never felt thought of it that way, that we're a mix of the sin from Satan and the love from Jesus. Yep. And that's the difference between light and dark. Okay? Dark is Satan. Light is him. And when we're in him, we walk in his light. That's why it's easier to die for Jesus to walk than walk in his light. Because what's Satan going to try to do? He's going to try to pull you away from him. Yep, he's going to try to pull out the lights. He wants the lights to go off. Satan doesn't care what you pick. You can pick anything in the world. Just not Jesus Christ. You can pick anything. That's why Satan's always trying to get us away from the Word of God. Satan is trying to get us away from focusing on Jesus and all of it. Anything else you think? In... No, that's it. So that wraps up John 11. Yep. Lazarus raised from the dead on the fourth day. That's how much our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves us. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Lazarus bless you today and always. God bless you all. Thank you.